just shows you how quickly it can all go wrong. We saw it with McNish in that traffic situation down through the Dunlop curves there. And even coming into pit lane, Le Mans can't catch you out. Corvette's in and Greg is there. Yes, this time it is the number 73. They peel off one of the windshield strips. They also peel off the same deal. The covers off of the lights at this stage. Obviously, out of protected until they really need the bright lights. And the driver change as Garcia is out. Beretta climbing behind the wheel. The five-time Le Mans winner. Boy, talk about going strength to strength. And they are going to do tires. This is amazing how they do this, the way they orchestrate this. That uh, right front tire goes on first. Then they switch. They do the right rear tire then with that pivoting arm the gentleman who did the right front runs out does the left front then they will rotate around take care of that left rear they've got this down to 18 seconds at one point they said we target 20 if we get 20 and if we do a 40 second stop with fuel we're good oh a little slow on the restart Bravo. oh ollie is shaking his head the no engine life. is not no. coming to life the lights are flashing. He is trying to trigger it. He, now, it, now we've got the it is fired, and he is underway. The pit stop was executed to perfection. However, the restart cost them a good six or seven seconds. So not a good time down here. Again, the pit stop done very well, but problems getting that engine restarted. But now he is down and underway very quickly. I've got Doug Louth here, and he is the uh, director of engineering for Pratt and Miller. Of course, it's the group that really builds this car, runs this team. Before Ollie got in the car, you guys were in a very intense conversation. I know you're not going to reveal secrets, but what is it when the head of engineering is having that kind of a conversation what a, uh, with the driver? What's the message? Uh, just briefing him on what's going on, what the drivers in the cars right now are working up against and how they're trying to deal with it, what to expect with what we're doing with the car, and uh, just, just try to give him as much information as possible. Also ask him for a few things once he gets in the car. We want some specific information from him and a few points during the outing. So just trying to do our best. Uh, it's, it's a tricky time of the race. I mean, this whole, you know, 7 a.m. or 7 p.m. to midnight or 2 a.m., uh, the track drops, you know, track temp drops. You go from one compound to another or two, and you're adjusting pressures, making the adjustments you can on the bar or the car to keep up with it. And uh, just a lot of stuff goes on, so. Sounds like basically he's being a universal translator, taking data into usable driver information, then driver information into data that you could plug in here. Tell you what, this is such high-tech stuff, and those drivers, they're looking for any edge they can get. One of the unique situations that the uh, Corvette has is its starting system, as you watch the 79 car go to bed for the evening. This car has starter motors that are at the back. It's not hooked to the engine like a conventional street car. It's got two starter motors. They're both at the back and they propel the drive shaft that starts the engine up. So if one of those starter motors gets hot or something goes wrong with it, you got the backup. I think that's probably what we just saw right there. One of the Lotus Jet Alliance, Lotus Evora is coming to pit road. Couldn't quite see if that was the 64 or 65. And just to finalize that point on the 79, that's the trio of Sam Hancock, Simon Dolan and Chris Buncom in the Jota Aston Martin. And whenever you see the garage door come down, that is game over here at Le Mans. Never Noticed on that pit stop with the Corvette guys, there's not a pit wall at Le Mans, obviously, there's that white line, and I spoke to Danny Binks, who was on the uh, right front when the refueling was done and got that wheel gun on there. They found that just being like 12 inches back with the wheel gun was costing them a second, so they had the wheel gun right on an imaginary plane with that white line, having it that close, just being able to immediately get it on to that right side really made a tremendous yeah. difference. This is a hurt engine, boys. Uh, it looks like maybe on one bank only, broken piston or something. I would expect that's puking oil through the header, so it's definitely coming out the tailpipe so you know it's engine. It's the 64 Lotus, and by their own admission, if they could see the checkered flag here at Le Mans, that was going to be a victory in itself. Yeah, now a spin. Yeah, that's oil-related. around the oil. Yeah. He's on his own oil. He's coming back to that pit stop on the most recent pit stop with Olivier Beretta there on the... Uh, in the Corvette, can't afford to lose any time here. You know why? 
Hearts, some teams that were a little further down are coming, like Mark Goosen's in that Pro Porsche team, is up to second now, and Jamie Mello in the 59 Luxury Racing Ferrari is up to third.